So today I'm going to be talking about perception when it comes to your personal brand, internally and externally, as well as how to actually fill and bridge the gaps between how you see yourself, what you're known for, and what you'd actually desire to be known for because oftentimes there is a gap in that space. So what we're looking at internally is like, yes, we know ourselves, we have this identity and things like that. We know, we maybe know our mission, we maybe know our values, we maybe know our vision and all these things like that. And this isn't necessarily enough to grow online. What actually really matters is understanding that our personal brand is actually decided by the public, our audience, our community and things like that because their perception, which is the external aspect, matters. So maybe deep down inside, you see yourself as a business coach or an, uh, a healer or a therapist or whatever type of coach it is, and the rest of the world may not see you that way based off of the type of content you put out and the value that you give. Now, maybe deep down inside, when it comes to being a business coach, we're saying things like, hey, this is how you grow this, this is how you expand your business, this is how you, you work on your personal brand, and the energy that we're actually putting out may feel like a spiritual vibe, because we have this very grounded spiritual energy. Maybe people may see us more as the type of coach that actually helps people get to the root cause of their problems, versus knowing that understanding the root cause of your problem is why your business isn't expanding. A great example is for myself, I truly believe that we don't have problems in our business. We have personal problems that show up in our business. And as I would share things like this about the personal issues that have to do with things like family. So I would talk to people and say, one of the reasons why you may not be showing up and creating content online is this fear of being seen or a fear of being successful. And this may be the root of it, might be something your parents or your family or peers or friends, educational system like a teacher, uh, religion or spirituality, or even society or media has said to you that made you feel like, ah, you're actually not worthy of being seen in your fullest creativity, your most authentic self. Now, that can really hurt people and damage people when you really know that things that are said to you as a child actually can stay with you for a long time until you're able to get to that root cause. So I would share things like this with the hopes of helping people understand, like, I would love for you to be the best creator that you can be. Then when I actually ask people like, hey, what is the value that you see me bringing? I was internally expecting people to be like, he's a business coach. He's a creator coach. People were like, you're really, really grounded. You're really great at helping me get to the root cause of my problem and helping me understand myself on a deeper level. Like it's very spiritual. It's very strategic. It's very enlightening. And, and when I heard these things, I was like, that's not what I want to be remembered for. Instead of getting upset with what people were saying, what I did is I just kind of pivoted. I was like, okay, I'm great at these things. These will be, you know, something like the soft skills, like the emotional things, the hard skill that I need to focus on is personal branding. So what I did to shift that and to fill that gap of how I saw myself, how I was like being perceived or what I was known for and the way I desired to be perceived was I actually needed to start putting out more content of the end result. So what I would do is I would start generating and creating. I would just ideate on all these ideas. I would put out content, you know, three videos every single day. And I would not just talk about the thing, but I would show people what it looked like to put out content consistently. In doing so, I grew my Instagram from zero to 10,000 followers organically in two months. Then people started asking like, well, how did you do that? And I was like, what it was is I started solving my own problems. And as I solved my own problems and documented the solutions, I started sharing the solutions very consistently. And in doing so, people were like, wow, this person really understands what a brand is. Because for me, the brand is, you know, internally, it's myself, it's the things that I've been through, it's my experiences. And externally, the brand was me being the living example of the desired outcome or lifestyle that people want to have. People wanted to grow organically and they needed to see what that looked like. Growth organically can't just be like, oh, he's talking about it. No, they needed to actually see my account grow organically, which meant as a content creator, as a coach, I also had to realize this is a long-term game. I know it's very easy to be like, I want the results now. I'm showing up now. I grew the account. Why aren't people, you know, falling in line and paying me all their money? Uh, and this is the magic and the beauty of building in public. I was actually building in public. I was showing people what it looked like from my day zero. You know, I'm like, this is a brand new account. I'm starting over from zero. And the first month was not fun at all. You know, I mean, it was fun to create and stuff. But when it comes to like the analytics and stuff, the analytics weren't that great. And I still kept going. I, I knew that this was like a long term journey. I kept showing up. I was engaging with people, which is something you definitely have to do. You have to engage with people. And at the end of the day, I would realize like, hey, I'm showing up and being of service because I genuinely just want to be of service. 
and in being of service i think by about uh week five or six like my content really started to go viral and i remember people asking like you know what's like the secret to your organic growth for you and creating content so often and i said I'm just not worried about perfection. Like, I really do believe that, you know, done is better than perfect in many instances. And I just focus on putting the content out. I would go into the hallway or the stairwell of the apartment building I was living in, which had like a brick wall behind me, decent lighting, and I would just record. And I would record three videos back to back, whether they were 15 seconds to 60 seconds. And then I would just edit the, uh, cut off the beginning, cut off the end. I would add the captions and just upload. I'd upload all three of them kind of one after one hour after another. And then that was done. Like by 10 o'clock, I'd already uploaded all three pieces of content. And then another day people were asking like, yeah, but like, where should I record? And I actually grabbed my camera and it was like, I want to show you all where I'm recording. So I was like, I'm in my apartment now. I walked out of my building, took about 20 steps, showed them the stairwell, showed them how dirty the whole stairwell was. There were pipes and dirt and dust and everything everywhere. I didn't care about that. All I needed was like this frame for myself and the energy of being of service. And in doing so, the account grew even more because people realized they didn't have to have this super fancy setup to, in order to record things. You just get to be yourself in the in the environment that you're in. And as you start to grow and develop and flow, you're able to buy all the nice things and stuff like that. Uh, and I did do that. You know, later on, I started recording then because I got a cool desk that was like a uh, uh, standing desk that was mechanical and could go up and down. I had the microphone, uh, the HyperX that I'm still using now with the boom stick and all the, or the arm and all these things like that. And ultimately, I just wanted to remind people that when it came to building that gap for me or filling in the gaps, it was just really learning to build in public. So allow yourself to build in public. Don't focus on, you know, this is the way people need to see me now. Start showing people what the journey was like from day zero. And if they don't know or they're new people, they will know because you'll bring up these stories about the lessons and the, the challenges that you've had. And not in a way where it's like, my life was so hard. It's in a way where it's like, hey, you know, month one was terrible. You know, week six, you know, I started to gain a little bit of track. You know, I would go live when I would go live and people were like, how did you get to where you had a thousand something people on your live? I was like, oh, the first month, the first week. It was four people. Second week, it was like seven people. Third week, it was like 13 and then 17. And then at the end of the month, it was like 50. And then, you know, I just kept showing up every single day. I was like, every day, 7 a.m., I'm going to be here for you all. And I'm just going to tell you all about the things that I'm going through in my everyday life. Haven't solved all the problems. I'm a human being just like you all. I made relatable content. And that's the secret. Just make relatable content. Build in public. If you want to bridge the gap internally and externally to how you see yourself, what you were known for and what you desire to be known for, again, be the living example of the lifestyle or the outcome that people actually desire, while also knowing that they will trust you so much more in them seeing that you've actually done the work or done the thing. And again, it's to share those experiences, you know, again, when I would go live and I hear so many people complain about it, my first couple of weeks, it was like four people. And I'd be like, I just want to thank the four of you for being here because you could be anywhere else. I just want to thank the 13 of you for being here because you could be anywhere else. I was constantly thanking them, knowing that the universe was like, wow, this guy is super excited to be helping four people. Imagine how excited he will be when I send him 50 people or 400 or a thousand. And when there were a thousand people on there, my energy was the same. I was like, thank you for the thousand people that are on here. My mission in life is to just change the life of one person every single day. And if I can do that, that's 365 people per year. And if I can do that, I will just feel great. And in doing so, I was able to amass my first uh, six figures in just storytelling. You literally can build an entire business around just telling your story, knowing that as you tell your story, there are people that are going to put you in certain boxes. Again, the, you know, the public determines your brand. And as the creator and coach and the uh, creator of your own destiny, you get to decide what boxes are going to put you in based on how you show up online. Uh, really, really hope that landed for you. It's always a blessing to show up and be in here. Uh, I've enjoyed this break and, and enjoying fatherhood and just spending quality time with my family. And again, just super excited to be back in this space and to share more things that I'm learning uh, from my wife, from my child, from myself, and just the world as a whole. You know, I have evolved as a human being over the last six months. You know, people are like, build in silence for six months. No, I was still building and showing up on different platforms. 
it's just in hindsight, when I look back, I'm like, wow, this has been an amazing journey. And I'm so excited to share all the things that I've been learning. Wishing you all an amazing day ahead of you. And I will be recording and showing up uh, as often as possible. Um, and just remember, you know, building in public gets to be fun. Creating gets to be fun. And if there's any last thing I can leave you with before you go on about your day, just remember that, like, nobody really lacks, you know, you, you don't have a creativity block or writer's block. Oftentimes, we may not just be living a life worth creating or writing about. So allow yourself to go experience life, you know, go outside of your apartment instead of going down the street that you normally go down, you know, still stay safe, go down a different street because you might see something new, go and stay in nature for five more minutes, more than the 15 that you normally stay, you know, read an extra five pages in the book and just be open to being inspired by the, the things you see, the what you read, what you hear and so on and so forth. And it makes this journey of being a creator, journey of being an artist so much more empowering. And with that being said, I've also been creating music. So I'm super excited to share all that with you all as well, because the aspect of being a creator and supporting artists like I do meant I actually needed to share my art. So building in public for me also means, hey, at some point people are going to see me also as an artist helping other artists. Wishing you all a divine and blessed day and looking forward to all the lessons I'm going to learn today, because I already know today is going to be filled with lessons because the day already started out with lessons. So I'll see you all soon.